I'm Anand Chokalingam. I'm a cardiologist. Uh, I'm an associate professor of internal medicine at the University of Missouri in Columbia, Missouri. I just presented at the International Academy of Cardiology Annual Scientific Sessions 2015, the 20th World Congress on Heart Disease held in Vancouver. The title of my presentation is uh, Evolving Understanding of Stress Cardiomyopathy. Within the next few minutes, I'd like to give you a brief summary of uh, our presentation and findings. Over the last 10 to 15 years, we have come to recognize Takasubo cardiomyopathy, also called stress cardiomyopathy, as an important uh, presentation of acute heart failure and a mimicker of uh, acute coronary syndrome in clinical practice of uh, medicine, emergency medicine, critical care, as well as cardiology. And uh, the original description of the classical syndrome of apical ballooning and uh, LV dysfunction uh, is still the most common variant, but we end up seeing a lot of other forms of uh, apical ballooning and stress cardiomyopathy in this day and age. What we have come to recognize is uh, the basal variant and the midventricular variant of stress cardiomyopathy is much more prevalent than initially understood. Uh, what we also feel is uh, diagnostic cardiac catheterization to prove the absence of occlusive coronary lesions, which is originally considered by uh, various criteria, including the 2004 as well as the 2008 revised Mayo criteria for stress cardiomyopathy, may not be an absolute requirement for diagnosing stress cardiomyopathy. The reason this becomes important is because we see a significant proportion, maybe 50%, 60%, 70% of stress cardiomyopathy is currently encountered in the various ICUs, not the people presenting as ACS to the coronary cath lab. If patient presents with chest pain, ST segment elevation, cath lab is activated, diagnosing stress cardiomyopathy can be done same day with an absence of uh, occlusive lesions by the angiogram. But now, in 2015, when we are seeing two-thirds of patients presenting to the medical ICU, surgical ICU, trauma presentations with uh, LV dysfunction and stress cardiomyopathy, getting a coronary angiogram done to prove it is stress cardiomyopathy is not easy, it is risky, and in increases patient uh, morbidity. So if we are able to confidently say this is stress cardiomyopathy and unlikely to be an acute coronary lesion that improves patient outcomes, reduces cost to the institution, and uh, in the long term improves uh, patient care as well. So we use ECHO as the big tool, and uh, initial echocardiogram can say the probable diagnosis is stress cardiomyopathy if the LV dysfunction is classical for the apical ballooning. And we want to venture further and say if we see the midventricular or the basal variant of stress cardiomyopathy, even at the initial presentation, we may be able to say it is definitive stress cardiomyopathy. We don't have to even wait for the recovery of LV function, which we classically do for the apical variant. And in the summary, what I would like to say is stress cardiomyopathy is much more prevalent in uh, medical ICUs than it is in the cardiac cath lab. The second concept is uh, the atypical variants, the mid and the basal variant of stress cardiomyopathy can be definitively diagnosed at presentation and the third and the important concept is even without resorting to a coronary angiogram, in many of these situations, we can come to the diagnosis of stress cardiomyopathy with a repeat echo showing normalization and recovery of LV function.